Uh, well that sucks. Game is all tied up with seconds left on the clock and this kid pulls off every Hooper's dream of knocking down a game-winning three-pointer at the buzzer just to have it called off by the ref. And most basketball fans who saw this video agreed that this move was in fact a travel. As tragic as this call was, it was the correct one. But if this is a travel, then so is this, and this, and this, and this, and all of these. NBA players don't have to follow the rules. I mean, they used to, but they don't anymore. Because according to them, they don't have to. Today's video is sponsored by DraftKings Sportsbook. Basketball season is set to tip off this week. The NBA and all of its glory is back, and this season you don't need to be on the court to get in on the action, because DraftKings is dishing out a can't-miss offer to new customers. All you need to do is sign up for DraftKings Sportsbook using promo code Jimmy Highroller, bet $5 on any pregame Moneyline wager, and receive an additional $200 in free bets if your bet cashes. No, your eyes do not deceive you. New customers who bet just $5 on any team to win straight up will get an additional $200 in free bets if their bet hits. It doesn't get any easier than this. And with same game parlays, you can combine multiple bets from the same game to give yourself a shot at even bigger winnings all season long. Just download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, new customers use promo code Jimmy High Roller, and receive $200 in free bets if your pregame money line hits after placing a $5 wager. That's promo code Jimmy High Roller only at DraftKings Sportsbook. In 2019, on the Raptors' road to a championship, Kawhi Leonard hit one of the greatest shots in NBA history. It's off to Leonard, defended by Simmons. Is this the dagger? A 20-foot fadeaway buzzer beater over Joel Embiid to win Game 7 in the second round of the playoffs. This shot has been cemented as a career-defining moment for Kawhi and the catalyst to one of the most legendary title runs in recent NBA history. But it never should have happened. See, run the tape back. Right about here. One, two, three steps without ever dribbling the ball. Kawhi Leonard traveled on this play. This should have been a turnover with four seconds left on the clock. How did the refs miss this call? This is Jason Phillips, 21-year vet as an NBA official. He's refed over 1,100 games. He's looking right at it. He must have just not seen Kawhi take an extra step, right? Or maybe he just didn't want to be the guy to call a travel on a mega superstar in a game seven of the playoffs. Either way, the call was missed and the Raptors now have a championship banner hanging in their rafters. But this isn't the first, nor the last time a player has gotten away with breaking the rules in a crucial moment. This Stephen Curry dagger in the 2019 playoffs against the Rockets was a carry. You can see it right here. He dribbles, does a hop step while carrying the ball, then crosses over. This should have been a turnover. Or what about Devin Booker's game-winning shot in the 2020 playoffs against the Clippers? One of the highlights of his career. Well, that shot came off of a travel. Just look for yourself. One, two, three steps, picks up his pivot foot, four. Go back and look at some of the best displays of footwork and handles over the last half decade, and you'd be blown away by just how many moves NBA players use on a consistent basis that involve traveling and carrying. It's shocking. At least from a fan's perspective it is, but to the players, this is all part of the game. A few months ago, a fan shared a clip of John ja Morant conjuring up one of the most egregious travel and carry jobs you'll ever see. And this fan did not hold back, saying John ja Morant carries the ball on pretty much every possession and it never gets called. Right below this post, Donovan Mitchell chimed in with four simple words. We all do it. And Mitchell is right. Nearly every single perimeter player in the NBA travels or carries a lot. Not in some inconsequential way, not every once in a while. It happens all the time, every game. 
especially in ISO possessions where you'll see players bend and break the rules virtually every single time. Now these travels and carries are not to be confused with the zero step or gather step that has ran rampant over the last half decade. Popularized by James Harden, if a player times their gather step well enough, they can get away with an extra step on their way to a shot. Like this play right here, where Terry Rozier gathers the ball at the exact moment that he takes his gather step, which allows him to take two more steps without getting called for a travel. This also applies to most step back jumpers. Gather, zero step, one, two. We aren't talking about these moves. We're talking about moves like this. John Morant dribbles, takes one step, two steps, three steps, carries the ball, and then takes a fourth step before dribbling again and finishing at the rim. And you may think, this move right here, this is an outlier, but it's not. Moves like this happen virtually every other possession in the NBA. Take this play by Jordan Poole. He's coming off a dribble, one step, two steps, three steps, four steps, before he dribbles again. But wait, he's not done. He burns Jordan Clarkson on the in and out, dribbles, takes one step, two steps, three steps, four steps. That's two violations in the same combo to create space from his defender. This is an epidemic, but if everyone does it, then why should it matter? The game has changed. Clearly the refs don't care, so why should we? Well, take this play by Kemba Walker. Oh, Walker, a little shake and bake, throws it up and rapids it. Walker's got Sadiq Bey on an island, so he hits him with a quick pullback to create space. This is fine. Walker's got separation and an open shot. But no, he takes one, two, three, four steps while carrying the ball, forcing Sadiq to close out, and then he blows by him. As a defender, if you see the offense take two, even three steps backwards, you know they have to commit to a shot or a pass. They have nowhere left to go, they've used all of their steps. But when the offense can just suspend the ball indefinitely and just take another step to blow right past you, how exactly are you supposed to defend this? It's the same general concept being used on most of these moves. Whether the player is using a zero step, a pocket dribble, a hesitation, most of the time, these moves are breaking some sort of rule. And when the defense sees a player hold the ball like this, they know they can close out strong because they know the offense either has to shoot the ball or pass the ball. Or at least they used to, before moves like this became perfectly legal in the NBA. And there lies the problem with players being allowed to use these moves in games. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, the league made an example out of Allen Iverson by having officials go out of their way to call carrying violations on him. Moves that by today's standards would be considered fairly simple and textbook were constantly being called as travels and carries. Just look at this call right here. And now they call holding the ball. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what that was. That was a Steve Jab. You don't shake your head while you're dribbling the ball to half court when you think he should have got a foul. I mean, that's he does that every time down the floor. He does that every time he puts it on the floor. Yeah. You see it? It's so insignificant that it's hard to even notice. But this move right here was called a carry back in 2001. Here's another clip from the late 90s. And just listen to how the commentators talk about Allen Iverson's game. Look at that. Down the lane, put it off. Hendrickson with the rebound, puts that one in. Let's see if you can see this, John. Let's watch Allen Iverson with the ball handling and see if you think this is close to a carry. I mean that, mm -hmm. look at that. You, you, you can't make that move and not carry the ball. Right? Again, by today's standards, what Iverson is doing here isn't even worth noting. In fact, in 2022, this is fundamental basketball. But 25 years ago, this type of ball handling was considered borderline street ball. These guys would have had a stroke if they saw what players today got away with. When you can bend the rules and even outright break the rules to manipulate the defense and score a bucket, the game completely changes. 20 years ago, there were only eight players in the entire league that averaged over 23 points per game. Every single one of them were all-time great players, and only five of them were perimeter players. Fast forward to 2021, and a whopping 22 players averaged at least 23 points per game league-wide, and 16 of them were perimeter players. 
part of this is due to players simply being more skilled than their predecessors. But just as big of a factor is the fact that perimeter players get a lot more leeway with the rules these days than they used to. It's not like Tracy McGrady or Gilbert Arenas or Paul Pierce didn't have the handle to pull off these moves. It's that they simply weren't allowed to do these moves. Listen to how commentators believed this was a travel back in the late 80s. Darwin Cook on Jordan, no chance. Oh my! Oh, they're jumping in the stands. Now there. watch. See his left foot, I thought, moved. Oh, no. no. Oh, <laughs> Imagine what some past all-time greats could have done if they were allowed to get away with what players today get away with. Here's a clip of Kobe putting on a footwork clinic without bending the rules. The fact that Kobe was so effective and so creative within the confines of strict rules makes it all the more impressive. The same could be said about Tim Hardaway, who patented his killer crossover in the 90s. Dude had defenders absolutely lost from a simple but effective crossover. Imagine what players like Hardaway, Marbury, Steve Francis, and Chauncey Billups could have done if they were able to take an extra step or two and hold the ball for a split second longer to break down the defense. A lot of these former players are justified in saying that the rules have been loosened so drastically over the last decade that they would have been even more dominant in today's game. So, if the players know they break the rules, why don't the officials seem to care, and why does the NBA allow this to go on? Well, for one simple reason. It's exciting. Is there anything better than a crossover that sends a player flying 10 feet in the wrong direction? What's more exciting than a well-executed hezzy that makes a defender look absolutely foolish? Looser rules means more action. More action means more points. More points means more superstars. More superstars, the more marketable the product is. Last season, the NBA clamped down on some rules that, for once, would favor the defense and punish bad offense. One of those rules was to crack down on intentionally baiting foul calls while shooting. And instantaneously, players across the league saw a massive dip in their offensive production. Some fans enjoyed this change, but a lot of players didn't. And so the NBA loosened the rule again and scoring shot right back up. Looser rules makes good players look like great players. It makes slightly marketable talent into extremely marketable talent. See, you or I could never pull off this move without being called for every violation in the rulebook. But we're not in the NBA. And don't get me wrong, not every highlight move you see in the NBA is a violation of some rule. Look at this madness from Jordan Poole right here. There's a lot going on, and not once does he travel or carry. Here's some more witchcraft by Kyrie Irving, where he shreds an entire defense and does it completely clean. It can be done. But when it isn't, most fans in the league as a whole are more than willing to turn a blind eye to it. Because what Allen Iverson proved 25 years ago still remains true to this day. And a foul will go on Judd Bushler. Lou Canales is sitting by. What do you got, Lou? I wanted to add something on Iverson's move. They have called it a number of times here in the league, and that's why the guy's averaging almost five turnovers a game, Tom. But right. also take into account this. That is his signature move, and if he is going to be truly one of the up-and-coming stars that's going to represent the league, they're going to let him get away with it more times than not. You're exactly right. I think that that dribble there is a carry every single time he goes to the basket. But, like I said, it's his signature move, and they're going to let him get away with it. 